Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Sally Burdett, live from Johannesburg. Your top stories this evening. Is this the end of the road for e-tolls or just an attempt to butter up the Gauteng electorate before May the 8th? The presidency says Cyril Ramaphosa's son did have a contract with Bosasa, but it was all above board. And the Human Rights Commission says the EFF's comments about whites and Indians was not hate speech. And we start here, and perhaps a sigh of relief for Gauteng motorists. If you haven't paid your e-tolls, it seems you're off the hook for now. Today, the National Roads Agency, SANRAL, suspended its debt collection with immediate effect. This, they say, so government can find a solution to e-tolls. But SANRAL has cautioned the debt could be reinstated if the need arises. Is this the end of the road for e-tolls? Our VOM Tila reports. Motorists who have racked up bills by failing to pay e-tolls in Gauteng are off the hook for historic debt. This follows a decision by the Board of Directors of the South African National Road Agency, which has decided uh, to, to, to halt the collection of historic debt. Uh, of course, this has been warmly received by many motorists in and around Johannesburg, with some saying that they weren't even going to pay e-tolls in the first place. Let's take a listen to what they had to say themselves. I'm very excited. If you don't have to pay, there's a good news. I think it's an election thing, a populist thing, and it will come back after the elections. No, it feels great. I think so. It's brilliant news. Is that confirmed? That's brilliant news. Fantastic, but we're not paying ahead, we're going ahead either. So we don't want to pay going ahead either. Don't want to pay e-tolls at all. Well, you heard it yourself, the news being uh, warmly welcomed by many motorists in and around the streets of Johannesburg. Uh, but uh, some will be disgruntled, of course. Those are the ones that have been paying uh, e-tolls constantly. Even the big companies that have paid thousands of rands into e-tolls every month uh, will be disgruntled by this news. Uh, but, the, but it leaves a lot of questions unanswered, uh, especially when it comes to what is the future of e-tolls, because we understand at this moment you are still required to pay your e-tolls. Well, the organization undoing tax abuse has cautiously welcomed Sanwell's decision to suspend the collection of e-toll debt, but it will continue to fight for a complete scrapping of the system. Debt isn't written off. The roads have not been declared as untold, and they, you know that decision also has to be made. The court case has to stop, and obviously then the, 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 the uh, outstanding debt from motorists is the question mark of that. So um, it is a suspension, but... The thing is, when you turn the engine off on a matter like this, it's very difficult to restart. Three, four, five months later, if they want to restart pursuing the debt, I can assure you there will be outrage. And it's very difficult because the courts, you know, have only got so many days to respond to summonses. We've been getting summonses in uh, over the last two days, three days. So now what does that mean? The court, does the court process get on hold? Because the court process doesn't stop. Uh, we're in the late advanced stage of discovery on this matter in court uh, on the whole ETOL decision, the law unlawfulness of it. So we need clarity now from government. What is going to happen in that regard? What are they going to do about the outstanding debt? Are they going to declare these roads as untold roads? The presidency has confirmed that the president's son, Andila Ramaphosa, received two million rand from controversial company Bosasa. He was paid a monthly retainer for advisory work through his company Blue Crane. That is until he terminated the relationship when questions were raised about the facilities management company. Now the presidency says this contract is separate to the half a million rand paid to the president's ANC campaign. Yesterday you'll recall former Bosasa auditor Piet Fenter told the State Capture Commission that money was paid to Ramaphosa Jr.'s trust account. But Presidency spokesperson Kusela Diko says this is not true. There are no allegations of any illegal activity, either by the President or Andile Ramaphosa. And secondly, there is nothing that came out in the, in the Zondo Commission yesterday which is not already in the public domain. Now, you'll remember that um, where this matter initially surfaced was in Parliament, when the leader of the Democratic Alliance was waiving an affidavit by Mr. Fenter, which affidavit spoke about this payment of 500000 allegedly to Andile Ramaphosa. Now, the President answered to say, yes, indeed, he's aware that there is a contract 
contract that exists between Andile as well as African Global Operations. And it was only after he had answered the question that he realized he had erred, and like any honest person would do, when he realized he made a mistake, he wrote to the Speaker of the National Assembly and he clarified, saying that the payment was not to Andile, however, it was to the CR17 campaign. To another high-profile father and son, former President Jacob Zuma says the prosecution of his son is an attempt to get back at him. He was in the Randberg Magistrates Court where Dudu Zane Zuma is on trial for culpable homicide and negligent driving. In 2014, the businessman skidded into a minibus taxi, killing Pumzile Dube. Malungelo Boy reports. The state had just wrapped up its case, which included photos of the 2014 collision, when Duduzane Zuma's lawyers applied for the businessman to be discharged. His lawyers say the state has not proven its case against him. The state has entirely failed to, um, to make out a case. If you take one step back, Your Worship, having heard all of the state's evidence, what is it that caused this collision? and you will be unable to answer that. The defense says some state witnesses had lacked credibility. Where is this evidence against Mr. Zuma that says he drove negligently? It's not there. But the state is rubbishing this, saying Zuma has a case to answer. Drivers of motor vehicles must again and again be reminded that they are in control of an instrument that takes a dreadful toll on life on the highways. That is our starting point. The prosecutor says the state witnesses were credible and corroborated each other's evidence. The former president says he can't help but think his son's prosecution is politically motivated. There was a process that was undertaken, which is a legal process, and it was concluded. Why then come back? And when you come back, there's no overwhelming evidence to say indeed there was negligence or whatever. The court will make a ruling on the application on Friday. Malungi Lopui, Randberg. The South African Human Rights Commission has let the EFF off the hook for hate speech. But they have said the EFF comments made were problematic in a society still trying to heal from a racially divided past. Four complaints were laid against party leader Julius Malema and one against Secretary General Godric Gaudi. The comments they made about white and Indian people. Sekho Hajjo Moachi reports. They found peaceful Africans here. They killed them. They slaughtered them like animals. We are not calling for the slaughtering of white people, at least for now. This is just one of the comments made by the EFF leader, which upset a number of groups. Other complaints include his singing of the song Kiss the Boer, a parody of the band Kill the Boer song, as well as comments he made about Indians treating black people in KwaZulu-Natal badly. But the South African Human Rights Commission says the context of each of Julius Malema's speeches must be taken into consideration. The Commission applied its mind to each of the five statements and adopted a finding that ultimately none of the five impute statements passed the legal threshold of hate speech and therefore did not amount to hate speech in terms of Section 10 of the Equality Act. In response, the EFF says Chapter 9 institutions like the South African Human Rights Commission shouldn't be abused to try and hide the Let truth. The Commander in Chief long live. We welcome the findings because they are consistent with the career logic and a strong message against those who are trying to suppress legitimate debate about the ills that are facing South Africa. <laughs> Those who don't agree with the Commission's findings can take them to court for review. Johannesburg. In other newsmaking local headlines, in Durban, truck drivers say they will continue their protest action. They've been blockading a road in Durban's Bayhead area since Monday. They're accusing government and truck owners of robbing them of jobs because they only apparently employ foreign drivers. 
Parts of Hart Bay and Cape Town were brought to a standstill this morning. This after a man was shot dead in apparent taxi-related violence. It's believed more than 40 gunshots were fired. Now, the incident happened next to the Hart Bay police station. Later in the day, taxi operators blockaded roads in the area. Still ahead, we've got all your market news and the news this evening. Edward Kisvetter has been appointed the new commissioner at the South African Revenue Services. Focus on economic news and breaking news this evening on the money collection front. The South African Revenue Service has a new boss. President Cyril Ramaphosa has appointed Edward Kisvetter as the Revenue Service's new commissioner. Kisvetter will begin his duties on the 1st of May. Now, he was SARS deputy commissioner between 2004 and 2009. Kisvetter replaces acting commissioner Mark Kingon. The appointment was guided by the recommendations from the Nugent Commission into Tax Administration and Governance at well, SARS. And if you are planning to visit your local tax office tomorrow, perhaps not the best day, all SARS offices nationwide are set to be affected by a strike. The Revenue Service has put contingency plans in place if it cannot reach agreement before tomorrow with some 10,000 workers affiliated to the National Health, Education, Health and Allied Workers Union and the Public Servants Association. Dima Katsutugwana has those details. Where workers of SARS are found, we expect the strike to take place. After five months of wage negotiations and a CCMA intervention between SARS and the unions, the parties are still worlds apart. Nehawu is demanding a wage increase of 11.4% as well as 1% for recognition of improved qualifications and a 10% bonus. SARS is pleading poverty, offering a 7% increase. Nehawu may settle for an 8% hike if a single-year deal is agreed to, as opposed to a multi-year agreement. The 7% has, has been there, it was rejected. We, we, don't, we, don't, we can't talk about it as a settlement if they are, they are linking 7% to a single term. It has been rejected early this year. It's reported that a diagnostic report shows low staff morale at the tax collector. Labour union Nehawu promises a total shutdown not only of SARS offices nationwide but also of the ports of entry when workers affiliated to the union and the Public Servants Association withdraw their labour. SARS says it has put measures in place to ensure minimal disruption. The branches and the ports of entry uh, and the contact centre for those that might want to call in. Um, so that's where the, the big impact will be. Workers are expected to continue the strike until an agreement is reached. Dimagazo Tugwana, Johannesburg. Uh, let's have a look at the markets and how they did today. Quick look at international news and Mozambique has confirmed five cases of cholera in Beira. The World Health Organization is sending 900,000 doses of the vaccine to the country. Officials are treating nearly 3,000 flood survivors for diarrhea, which of course is a symptom of cholera. Rescue efforts are still continuing in the wake of Cyclone Adai that hit Mozambique and also wreaked havoc in Malawi and Zimbabwe. More than 700 people have been killed across the region and many more remain missing. Still ahead, we'll get all your weather with Candace and then the latest from Daisy. Yes, she's only eight years old, but she has things to say and places to go. Let's get all your weather news now with Candace McKechnie in Cape Town. Evening, Candace, how are you doing? 
Hi, good evening, Sally. All good here in Cape Town, but I'm sure you felt a little bit of that autumn chill today where we had cooler temperatures over the eastern part of South Africa. The good news is, is that it will warm up again over the eastern part of South Africa on Thursday with those temperatures bouncing back quickly. We are expecting a bit of fog along the west coast overnight and into Thursday morning. Overall, we're forecasting mostly clear to partly cloudy conditions of the predominantly dry day across the country. I mentioned those warmer temperatures over the eastern part and there's a very small chance of thunderstorms across the country but if they do form we'll see them forming between northwest and the KZN coastline. It's a mostly clear and hot day throughout the northern Cape, Uppington, Prisca and Kimberley all heading into the mid-30s but the chilly start of the day in Sutherland at 6 and a high of 26 degrees. Around 30 for Worcester and Robertson as well as Ertzern, partly cloudy at 24 for Cape Town and Hermanus. Quite a bit of cloud settles in as we head towards George and Mussel Bay. You'll see warmer temperatures throughout the eastern Cape with highs heading into the upper 20s and low 30s with a dry forecast throughout the province. Temperatures bounce back in Kwisudin and Tull, 33 degrees for Ladysmith and Freyheit with ice set at thundershowers expected over the KZN interior. Partly cloudy at around 30 over the western part of Mpumalanga is sissing hot 35 for Skukuza with Palaboa, Messina, Lepalale and Tabazimbi also heading into the mid 30s. You'll see another dry and hot day for northwest with the slight possibility of thundershowers, Mahi King and Clarksdorf both topping 33 degrees. Sunny 29 for Harry Smith with a partly cloudy and dry day for Bloemfontein at 31. Gauteng can expect a maximum temperature of around 30 degrees. Things should remain partly cloudy and dry, but there is a very slight chance that thunderstorms could form later on in the day. On Friday, we'll see thundershowers in Sepolokwane at 31. Partly cloudy and dry along the coastline with a sunny and hot weather persisting across the interior all the way through to the weekend. On Saturday, we'll see a bit of that thunderstorm activity again over parts of Limpopo and Pomalanga and the interior part of Kwisudi Natal. That's all from the Weather Centre. Have a good night. Thank you so much, Candice McKechnie there in Cape Town. And finally, the eight-year-old girl who stole the hearts of the president and the nation has addressed Eastern Cape politicians. Now, you may recall Daisy Ngedle wrote a letter to Cyril Ramaphosa asking if a girl could be president. Well, today, Daisy had a few things to say at the signing of the IEC's Electoral Code of Conduct in East London. With her small voice, this brave young girl is raising serious issues experienced by millions of South African children. I am here to ask you a few things we the children would like. We need protection from people who kidnap children. We are always scared at the mall, at the park and at home. I would like more hospitals so people can get help. I would like more schools to be built so every children can go to school. Eastern Cape political leaders are motivated by this future presidential hopeful. We always take pride when we see young people uh, showing that kind of an interest because this is their future. So it's important that when we see such kind, we always actually try to motivate. She made a very big and loud statement that people should understand that their children want to live in a South Africa where there's peace and harmony and opportunity. The IEC in the Eastern Cape has praised the eight-year-old. This ambitious girl says this is the first step towards her destiny as the future president of South Africa. Before we go, let's recap your top stories this evening. Etoll debts are suspended. Is this the end of the road for Etolls or just an attempt to butter up the Gauteng electorate before May the 8th? And the president, he says, Sir Ramaphosa's son did have a contract with controversial firm Borsasa, but it was all above board. From me and the team, it's a very good night.